the St. Eugene Resort and Casino still holds many memories for Sophie Pierre. So this is a picture of my first communion, um, my class. Pierre has become one of the leading voices in British Columbia for Indigenous issues and development. She spent 26 years as the chief of the St. Mary's Indian Band and much of her childhood at the St. Eugene Mission School. The most um, powerful memory that I have of being here for those nine years, coming here as a six-year-old and then leaving as a 15-year-old, is the incredible loneliness of the place. Built in 1910, this institution sat empty after it closed in 1970. Ironically, the Ktunaha Nation turned a place of forced assimilation into a place of new financial opportunity. This was our own people, our five communities that made that choice. And it was a really tough thing to do. But just like all tourism businesses, St. Eugene has struggled in the past two years. Restrictions have forced the business to become seasonal, closing down over the winters. And then Pierre's band also heard about potential unmarked graves found at other Indian residential school sites. It came as a, as a huge surprise to, um, to all of us. She says her band knew there were unmarked graves at this site because they use wooden crosses, which can burn or rot. It's not the same as what's happened in Kamloops. We are talking about graves that are inside the graveyard. However, um, unfortunately, it just got away with the media. The person interviewing me, finding out that I was a former student, wanted to, wanted to portray me as some kind of victim. And so, <laughs> I'm nobody's victim. I was victimized as a child. That was not my fault, and I'm not a victim. As for the papal apology, at this point, for Pierre, it's meaningless. It would have meant a lot more to my mother's generation than it does to mine, quite frankly. Brendan Coulter, CBC News, Cranbrook.